okay first of all let's just ignore that i haven't had a haircut in like five years so just ignore my hair for this video but yeah i know a lot of you guys are thinking about your personal statements um if you're going into your 13 in september i just wanted to read over my personal statement i haven't actually seen it since i applied I just kind of want to read over it and then talk you through like kind of the process of how I wrote my personal statement but I might make another video on like an actual full depth how to write one from scratch but yeah I guess I'll just I've got my iPad here with my entire personal statement and I'm just gonna read through it and comment on whatever and by the way I applied for just pure maths no other courses so the whole thing's about maths pretty much so I started off with for me, what makes maths enjoyable is the perfect blend of struggle and success that comes with each new problem. And what for, I guess, just something to start off. Um, my desire to study maths at the university began when I went to a maths symposium for aspiring mathematicians. I didn't even know what a symposium meant, but basically I got my auntie who is an English teacher to just read over my whole thing and just like changed a couple words to look more fancy because um my english is not the best so i just wrote it all in basic basic english and then she kind of like edited it a bit to make it sound more formal so i'd recommend like if you know anyone who's like an english teacher or pretty good at english get them to read over it even if you're not applying for english like i did maths just get them to read over it and help you out a bit the speakers discussed various beauties found in maths of which the topic of fractals i found most appealing the man of what set uh, inspired me to take a deeper look into fractal geometry. Curiosity led to wider research into fr other fractal shapes, such as Sapinski's triangle, a fascinating fractal formed from random probability. Okay, basically, all I'm writing about is what made me think, oh, I want to do a maths degree. Um, I never really had a point where I was like, okay, I'm doing a maths degree now after this, but I just used this. Um, this was like a maths strip. I just used that as a cause for my want to do maths degree, if you get what I mean. Basically, it's good to build a story for the university so they know how you wanted, how you first started to want to study that subject. I can't speak, but you get you get what I'm saying. And then look, when I learned that fractals is one of the many optional modules study at university, I was inspired to do a maths degree. It's, I just, yeah. It's not fully true, but I was kind of interested. And then now I'm just going to talk about some things that I've done that are linked to maths. I don't really do much, but I just talked a bit about it. So take part of the UKMT Senior Maths Challenge and sitting the Tamua allowed me to stretch myself mathematically and reach a better understanding of the lifestyle of maths to our university. Basically just saying I did the TMUA and UKMT Maths Challenge. Um, in the TMUA particularly, I enjoyed learning the concept of logic and statements such as the use of if and only if statement and finding the contrapositive of a statement. Basically this is just stuff I learned that's extracurricular so it's not in the math syllabus at A level. So I'm just kind of like saying I'm interested in not just A level just wider out if that makes sense. I'm excited to know that these concepts are used at university in advanced proofs such as the proof by contradiction. Yeah, link it to university, say like I'm excited to know we're gonna go deeper into this subject that I'm interested in in university. So you kind of have you show them that you have that interest in studying in university and not just the subject in general. So far my favourite part of maths is pure maths, particularly calculus. Team UA required understanding of FTC formula. Learning this allowed me to feel more prepared for Ayla uh, wait. Uh, I can't read. Prepared for degree level maths. A, prob a problem with calculus that I found particularly interesting whilst browsing on the in internet was Gabriel's horn. Basically I just wanted to, I was trying to say I found a YouTube video on a really cool maths problem and then I just explained what that Gabriel's horn is to show that I'm actually like, I actually looked into it. This is a geometric horn shaped object that has an infinite surface area but a fixed volume Integration is used to prove that the seemingly impossible case is unintuitively possible. My further read reading into FP2, which is a module in further maths that I didn't study, so I'm trying to say that I looked into the future or like wider, if that makes sense, than what I was meant to. Um, reading into FP2 was used 
to understand how the surface area of a revolution surface area of revolution is calculated. Gabriel's horn is also used to explain the painter's paradox where infinite, infinite amount of paint is needed to cover the surface of the shape, but only a limited volume of paint is needed to fill it. However, I find it amazing and fascinating that this mathematical theorem has also been used by various the theology. I don't know how to say that word. Theologians, the theologians, I think it's that, and political philosophers to either prove or disprove God's existence. That one was recommended to me by my auntie because I looked a bit deeper into Gabriel's horn. It's quite philosophical as well, so I just had to link it to other subjects, not just maths. Yeah, so that was just showing that I enjoy the subject and I looked around a bit more than just the A level. Also enjoyed teaching maths, whether it's my friends, my cousins or other students, I find ways to help people with their difficulties in maths. For a period, I tutored a foundation GCSE student, which was a challenge as he was struggling only a few months before his exam. We did this by going through past papers and finding his weak areas, practicing these topics using targeted question sheets. Until he was confident, this gave me insight into what teaching is really like, help, helping to solidify my mathematical skills and strengthening my communication skills. <sighs> basically kind of waffle. Like, it's true, all of it, but I'm just basically all I said was I did tutoring for a little bit. That's pretty much what I said. And then now, pretend that maths doesn't exist and I'm just talking about hobbies and interests. So outside the classroom, I also enjoy challenges such as completing the DOV Gold Expedition. See how I wrote Expedition because I didn't actually get the certificate because I didn't do any volunteering. So whatever, I still got into uni and I can't be bothered. I had to volunteer for like two years or something and I just didn't want to do that. So I just, dropped out of DOE pretty much. Solving Rubik's Cubes and playing chess. These are all forms of problem solving, reflecting my strong enthusiasm for finding solutions. I volunteer regularly to play chess with an elderly gentleman who is at an early stage of dementia. So this is just little things that I've done here and there. I only, vo only volunteered like three times. So. <laughs> Throughout the duration of my A-levels, I've been working part-time as a lifeguard, which has required organizing my time. Not really. I am also committed to many activities, including BJJ, swimming, skateboarding, playing guitar, which I learned in one term, blah, 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 and make quick decisions. Oh, wait. Weightlifting and rock climbing. Why is there two full stops? I don't know. The DOV expedition taught me how to work with various types of people and make quick decisions in stressful situations. It also inspired me to start hiking and in the summer climbing one of Snowden's toughest routes. Basically, I just wrote what I learned from all of these experiences. So you just kind of say what I learned from volunteering, what I learned from DOV, whatever you've done, just just write what you've learned. And by the way, I wouldn't recommend DOV to anyone. I think it's a big waste of time. So just don't do it. It's not worth it. The expedition was fun, but it's just not worth it. And the last part is just kind of a closing thing. But link it back to maths. I look forward to diving deeper into the intricacies of maths. Although I'm not sure what I want to do after university, being honest, be very honest, I appreciate how versatile a maths degree is in terms of employment, which is true, but nevertheless, I want to study maths truly because of my curiosity and passion for the subject. There you go. And I think it was a pretty decent personal statement. And it clearly worked because I got into my dream uni. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, just let me know um, if you need any more help with personal statement. If you want me to make another video about it, if you want me to make another personal statement video, just like how to write it from scratch, how to start, how to finish, how to do everything. Just let me know if you want to make that. If you want me to make that video, someone's at the door. My next video will probably be on maths and how I got A star maths and how to get A star maths and all of that stuff because everyone's asking, please make a video, please make a video. And then I might make a further maths one and maybe economics one, but I kind of forgot most of the economics. But yeah, I'll see you then.